and you renewed your mind, your spiritual mind of the Word, you're going to be able to understand and pick up the thoughts of the Spirit of God. Yeah. So you're going to be able to know those thoughts. You're going to be able to know His ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, last but not least, both the natural mind and the spiritual mind is what causes the five senses to function. Did you know your natural mind is how your five senses work in the natural? I googled the word mind and five senses. And you know what it told me? It told me this. <laughs> this is the scientific research on the five on your mind and the five natural senses. Natural now. Say natural man. Natural man. It said this. You don't see with your eyes. You don't hear with your ears. You don't smell with your nose. You don't taste with your tongue. And you don't feel with your skin. All of those things are sensory receptors. That receive stimuli and information from the world around us. Turn them into electrical impulses. Shoot them to different parts of your brain. And your brain is what sees and hears and smells and tastes and feels. So if you have a healthy brain, your five spiritual senses will be very heightened and acute. Now, we have to know it takes a mind to operate senses. Natural senses. Do you know the Bible speaks about five spiritual senses? Ooh. So our spirit man must have a mind to operate five spiritual senses. I'll show it to you. Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm going to begin reading in verse 11 and go through verse 14. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, we have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Become as such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a baby. But strong meat belong to them that are of full age. Now this is talking about spiritual maturity right now. How many of us is talking about your spirit man? Spiritual maturity. Strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses. You know what this word senses means? Five spiritual organs of perception. means organs of perception. In the Greek. Look it up. Be a student of the Word. Check it out. Amen. Amen. Who by reason of use have their senses. Those five spiritual senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now let's talk about these five spiritual senses of hearing, seeing, feeling, tasting, and smelling. And I've got scripture for every one of them. How many is ready for it? Yeah. Anybody want to know? Yeah. Does your spiritual mind want to know? Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. One person. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody else's spiritual mind want to know? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. you got to be hungry enough for me to give this to you. I had a, a couple come to me one time and they said, Would you train us in the prophetic to be used of God like you are? You know what I said? Number one, are you called? Yes, we're called in the prophetic. Okay. Number two, are you hungry enough? Because if you're not hungry enough, I listen, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Here it is. That's it. That's it. I've tried on the farm before. You may have to take him by the salt block first. <laughs> Let him lick on that salt block for about 30 minutes. Then lead him past the water like it's in his idea. <clears throat> I've tried to force their mouth. It don't work. Amen. <laughs> Woo, how many's hungry? Yeah. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. I stay hungry. I can't get enough of God. Yeah. I want more. more. Come on, anybody have a more ministry? I just want more. We're going to put hearing and seeing together. These are your sensory receptors of spiritual sight and spiritual seeing. And we'll begin with Matthew 13, 13. So that ought to be easy to find. Matthew 13, 13. Hallelujah. A way of teaching. If you will remember the address first before the actual book, you'll never have to ask, where, where is that that you're talking about? If I say 13, if I say Matthew 13, 13, you already got Matthew in your mind, so don't think about Matthew. Don't write that down first. Write 13, 13 down first and then put Matthew in front of you. And you'll be razor sharp and never miss one of those that's spoken out. When someone says, turn to a certain passage. What passage did he say? And you have to say it five times. It's because you listen. Don't write down the Matthew part. Write 13, 13. Because that's the hard part to remember. Okay. Matthew's easy. Come on, I've done this for a little while. All right. In Matthew 13, 13, Therefore speak out of them in parables, because they see, see not. And hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. He's talking about two set of eyes, two set of ears. Come on, somebody! Yeah. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart... Is wax gross or hard? Their, dull, their ears are dull of hearing or tired of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand where their heart should be converted, and I should heal them. Woo. Now there's, there is so much revelation in that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I said there's so much revelation in that. Yes. Yes. The first thing he's talking about is that, listen, you have to listen. You've got to catch this. You, you hear on purpose or you don't hear. Yes. Yeah. Sit, sit. You see on purpose or you don't see. Yeah. And you have to, listen, you have to open your ears and open your eyes. Yeah. I've been in church services where huh, I've seen this happen. It's amazing about people closing their eyes. <laughs> I can preach on one part of the Bible and then you said you're happy as a lark, but I preach on healing and maybe they don't believe Jesus heals today. Yeah. I've seen them sit there bat their eyes at me. Why? Because the light is bright in their eyes. You know why? Because there's darkness. That's it, that's it, that's it. Darkness, you know, Let's look at light and darkness for a moment. In, in John, St. John chapter 1, Verse 1 through 5 even. It speaks about light and darkness. Light represents the revelation of God's word. Darkness represents ignorance of truth. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. One more time. Yeah. See, light represents revelation of the word. Amen. Darkness represents ignorance of truth. In fact, the word darkness in John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. And you can read a few other verses in there all the way to verse 12. The word darkness is that, that Greek word skatos. And it means ignorance of truth. Ignorance of truth. See, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. It spoke about Jesus and John the Baptist and, and different ones. Amen? Amen? About bringing light where there was darkness. What does that mean? Light's the revelation of God and His Word. Darkness is ignorance of truth. Amen. If your eyes are full of darkness, how great is that darkness? And if your eyes are full of darkness, you'll squint at the light. How many has ever uh, had your house ruined? Uh, my wife loves at night to have total darkness in the house. And I kind of got used to it, so I'm almost that way anymore. She doesn't want any lights on, nothing, you know. And so I got used to it. Well, there's been a couple of times when early in the morning, maybe on August morning where the sun was uh, really shining brightly, clear, beautiful day, and I throw open the blinds. And the light comes in where darkness 